Hello everyone, my name is Michael, and today we're going to do something a little different from Ransomware. We're actually going to take a look into a CTF. Now this is the Capture the Flag Flare On 7 challenge for 2020, and we're going to look at the first challenge here, uh, Fiddler. If we take a look at the message, uh, it gives us just a rundown of how the competition works, basically, on how to, uh, you know, give them the flag on their platform and score points. So, this challenge is written in Python, distributed as a runnable EXE, and they actually give you the source code, which just basically solves us, saves us one step on decompiling it. Not a big deal, but just makes it a little, a little quicker to jump in. Uh, it says you can run the source code directly on a Python platform with Pygame if you prefer. So, let's just start out by trying to run it. So, Fiddler EXE, and we'll first run into the first hurdle I hit. Um, this challenge actually requires Python 3. Uh, by default, I still have Python 2.7 as, as the Python version on my virtual machine. So, we're going to have to run the source code with Python 3. I have that uh, signed to a different name here. So, let's do Python 3 fiddler.py. And we get a password protected screen, protected by the flare on turbo nuke. Okay, um, I have no idea what the password is at this point, so I'm just going to put in something, and we get this <laughs> kind of interesting FBI anti-piracy warning. The fun little story here. So, alright, so our first challenge is to get around this password screen. So, let's go ahead and take a look at the source code, since they just gave it to us. We can see they're using the Pi Game Engine. Um, I usually start out by going to the end of the file with Python because this is where the main definition is going to be. Uh, so we have the main function. They're going to check for a password. If successful, then we run the game. Um, otherwise, we get our fail screen, which I'm assuming is our FBI warning. So let's take a look at our password screen. All right, so that'd be this function right here, password screen. And there's the text we saw, uh, programs protected by the turbo nuke. Alrighty. So, if we look at the, this is kind of like an event loop, it looks like. So, they're getting controls, check if the input box was submitted. Alright, so here's the text we enter, goes into a password check. Uh, so, this password check, we have a set string here. We basically go over this entire string, subtract one and then match it. So we have a hard-coded uh, password here. So one thing we could do is we can copy this into Python, paste it, replace this uh, variable with hip2, and here we go. Our password is ghost. So exit out of that context. Run this, and ghost is our password, and here we go. We are treated with a handsome little kitty, and it's just a very simple kitty clicker game, um, with, including an auto clicker. And it seems you have to earn 100 billion coins uh, to reveal the flag. Now, I've wasted probably weeks of my life on the original cookie clicker and cookie clicker 2, so I am aware of how long it takes to get that many. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when you don't have uh, faster auto clickers, so we're definitely going to have to hack this game. So I'm not going to spend. I'm not going to sit here clicking that long. So we have a couple options here. Uh, first off, since we're going to um, analyze this further, uh, we definitely need to track down where the win condition is. So. We know after the password was entered, we go to a game screen. We can see that, you know, some boilerplate stuff, setting up the clock, setting up the screen. Here's the instructions. Um, let's go down to, all right, target amount. So we do some large integer math here, and then we check our current coins against it. Subtract, and we actually do some math and pass it into a function for victory screen. So we need this many coins and honestly I got lazy and didn't feel like doing the math uh, you'll see why we don't really need to do the math later so if we take a look here we take our token and it looks like they're giving you a win condition with flare on 
text, we actually are passing that into a decode flag, and the output of that is going to be shown on a label. So let's take a look at this decode flag function. We see that our token is basically passed into a last value, which becomes a state for our decryption here. Now we have an encoded flag, and we'll notice it's all integers between 1,000 and like 1,200. Um, so that can give us kind of a clue that our result here needs to be in that range between 1,000 and 1,200. And it's from a, there's a division operation on it. So um, you could probably math out backwards what the actual value is. Um, so we're going to iterate over the encoded flag. Each character gets into the C variable, which is then um, does some more math on it. XORs it with our last value, which starts out as this number. And then that gets assigned to that, that last value gets assigned the C variable, which is the encoded flag. And then we output it or return it. Now, something you can notice here that will be um, interesting to note when we actually go to crack this is uh, because the encoded number is being stored as the last value, this is actually kind of a self-synchronizing cipher. And what I mean by that is if we corrupted one of these, one of these uh, encoded numbers, if I just change this, it will corrupt that number and possibly the next one, but the rest of them will be completely fine. Um, so we can actually kind of use, we can kind of see that we just, uh, that this is probably going to output the rest of the flag, honestly. Um, we just have to figure out what the first state was. So, um, honestly, I'll show you how I solved it first, and then I'll show a second way of solving this. Um, I won't show the third one because I didn't care to do the math. Um, so I just copied out this uh, decode function, and let's just pass it with a zero. So Python 3, test, and here we go. We see it at... It, ends in at flareon.com so we see idle with kitty now we have a question mark because we didn't figure out what that first value actually is um, so at this point honestly I just guessed uh, my first guess was you know sometimes they throw some leet speak in these flags so I tried it with a one that didn't work I tried it with a capital I that didn't work I tried it with a lowercase I that worked um, so that's how I solved it uh, when I came back to think about how it probably one way you, you're supposed to solve it to actually get that number, um, you could um, you could also just iterate over. Since I mentioned these values are between 1100 and 1200, you can just write a for loop, go among those, check if it's an ASCII character, then output it. That kind of shows you the possibilities. Um, honestly, it's just going to show the whole ASCII alphabet, really. Um, so. One thing I noticed up here is we have a current coins and a current auto clickers variable. Well, if um, we just edit this, um, I'll just make it some big number, 2 to the 35th. I just grabbed that magic number from uh, where they're doing these digits here. So if we just, we just make the auto clickers do the work for us, honestly. Let's go ahead and run that. Put in our thing here, and there we go. And it is a lowercase i, so idle with kitty at flareon.com is our flag. And if you input that into the website, you get a point, and you get the next challenge unlocked. So that was a pretty simple first challenge. Um, I'd say it's definitely very, very easy. There's, there's a couple ways you could hack this. I mean, you could just set your current coins off the bat. Like I said, there's probably, you can reverse engineer the math and actually find the number. I know just from playing with it, the number is 1,030. Um, so that has been the first challenge of Flare on 7 2020. Thank you for watching, and I will continue this series uh, pretty soon. Thank you.